Hi, I'm Jack. I'm coming to you today from the inside of my Airstream Safari. It's a 1967 model, and we are redoing the taillights today. We have some taillights uh, right here. Oh, uh, you got to stay tuned for the end of this video. It's real short. I promise you it's less than 10 minutes, and I got something really cool for you at the end. So make sure... Take your t uh, time right now, hit that like button or hit this button right here, whatever that is. I don't, I don't know what this means. But anyway, uh, and I tried it, you can't do this both at the same time. It's either one or the other. So anyways, hit the subscribe button. And now we're going to put these fantastic 7-inch, they're the same size as the outside lights. But we're going to put these on because they're LEDs. There are 12 volts, the low power consumption, and they work. People see them on the highway. The old ones, I just couldn't get a replacement for them for the 1967. So this is what we're going to do. Now, I'm going to show you this. The inside of this is just absolutely phenomenal. To see, everybody says, oh, I want an Airstream. They're so cool. Oh, everything is so great. Look at this. This, after you take the inside panel off of the back, this is wiring from the factory. This is original. First thing we got to do is remove the old lights. I'm going to show you the old lights um, held in place just so we can see what we got. And then this is the Airstream. Oh, I will have to show you the real tow vehicle one of these days. So anyway, that's what we call TV, you know, when we're really cool uh, uh, camping uh, people call it a TV, tow vehicle. So anyway, here are the old lights. Um, uh, the, the edges are rusty. It had the uh, old single bulb thing. And we got these. And people are going to be able to see me when I turn on my turn signals or hit my stoplight, or if I happen to be still um, heading for my campground at 9 p.m. I'll show you this very carefully here. Uh, we have this uh, old weatherproofing, but the new uh, lights come with a rubber gasket, so we don't need to worry about that. We'll just ease that off out of the way. So we have some rivets right here. I'm going to get my little uh, 3 16 drill drill these rivets out take this off so the drill i'm using for this job is this dewalt cordless 18 volt these have the lithium batteries they're very they're a very good uh, cordless screwdriver and i i use a drill this drill is uh the bit is way larger than the one eighth this is a one eighth drill bit but i'm just I'm drilling off the head. See, the head fell off. The rivet is still in there. Don't worry about that. We'll take care of that in a minute. Sometimes when I'm doing this, I, I change the angle of my drill. Kind of like I'm, I'm wearing it out. That's what I'm trying to do is wear this out to get rid of it. Ooh, that, that thing right there, that was getting old and rusty. I think we have some uh, original equipment, uh, 1967 school bus uh, taillights that have been used here. Oh yeah, look at that, pulls right off, not a problem. And then we're going to clean this up. All of this, this is original. Uh, this is uh, what they used to call Dum Dum. It's body putty, auto body people. It's like a uh, gray clay. And it was used as a sealer between auto body parts uh, since the very early days of automotive construction. Now to go on with the cleanup process, I have a plastic putty knife. These are very inexpensive. You can get them at almost any hardware store. And they help, uh, they help when you're scraping things off. 
uh, without scratching the uh, Airstream aluminum. We don't want to scratch the clear coat. So we're trying to be very gentle and just, just work on that. Usually I try to work away from the, like if this is a good part over here, and this part here is never going to be seen again anyway, even though we don't want to mess it up, we're going to start from the outside and go towards the inside. On the inside, this is the old bottom rivet that we're looking at. I used these pliers to cut the wire and I thought, oh, let's try them on the inside of the rivet. So I just grabbed the inside of the rivet and wiggle until it comes out. Well, I guess you're wondering what kind of a wild and crazy thing am I going to do this time? So, Here's looking at you. <laughs> you looking at my tail lights now. Now, here's the original insert, a little plastic insert that uh, prevents the wire from chafing against the aluminum. Here's the new weather strip that came to me with these lights. And if I line up that, uh, that hole at the top and this hole on the side, this hole on the bottom, the wires will go through right there. And what we're going to use to hold this up now that I've done all of this woodwork on the inside instead of using rivets because of the style of this light you can't open it up and change the light bulb you have to replace the light so you carry a spare if it goes out but i've got these screws any person with a nut driver can take care of it even at a truck stop or at a rest area on the side of the road in the middle of the winter if you have to and the, the screw will go in and out several times over the course of the years. And if you need to, it's wood on the inside. You can expand to a bigger screw. But it'll be a simple process. You won't have to unrivet and re-rivet. So as these go on, happen to have some special screws that have a rubber insert washer. And when they go in, they go between the screw and the plastic. They hold it up very snugly. And I do um, use these screws quite a bit. They're very, very strong. And there we see the wires coming out. The wires will come out down here, right in there. This is okay, I have it sitting in place. I just put these screws in. I started with the top one so it would hang. And I left it loose, just so I got caught a couple of threads. Then I did the bottom one, and I left that loose, so I could pull it out, and I could look inside there, and see where exactly where my hole was, to make sure I was lined up with the hole. Then I also did the two sides, one after the other. These, these aren't the matching screws, but I ran out of them, but I'm using them as placeholders. So I make sure I'm all lined up before we start tightening the screws. We always make sure everything is lined up, then we start tightening. Now I'm using the Ryobi cordless drill here. It's an 18 volt. This thing has served me very well and I am very careful. It used to go nice and easy because of that plastic. We don't want to torque these things down to to hurt the plastic, we're just holding them up against the wall. I've got an inch and a half of wood on the inside, so everything will be dandy. And I'll just tighten those up a little bit. Bob's your uncle. <laughs>